All right, welcome back to Simple Trust Analysis, part two. And in part two, we're going to go ahead and do shear and moment diagrams, which you can do for this for this truss. And just like any, actually, we haven't done the reactions yet, so let's let's do the reactions before we get any further. And I'm going to do them down here and then erase. So, looking at this, you have some of the forces in the x direction. We'll go ahead and write it out. Some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. This is an x, not a y. Equals ax. So we know ax equals zero. Easy enough. We have two unknown y re reactions, so we can't solve for the sum of the forces in the y direction. We have to do the sum of the moments. Sum of the moments about, let's just go ahead and do sum of the moments about point A equals zero. Then let's go from left to right. You know, A is, we're isolating GY. This is a G. I don't know what that looks like, but GY. There we go. And uh, we just want to go from left to right. So we know this is going to not induce a moment because it's concurrent. We want to go over to three kips. So we're going to say three kips times 7.5 foot. And then we say, oh, well, we know that's 15 foot. So it's also going to induce a positive moment. So that's two kips times 15 foot. And then we have three kips right up here times what? 15 plus 7.5 is 22.5 foot. And then we have all the way over here, whoops, we have G. And that's going to induce a negative moment because it's going to be going that way, which we've defined as negative. We're going to say negative or minus GY times 30 foot. And we'll solve for GY. So we have 3 times 7.5 plus 2 times 15 plus 3 times 22.5. And then we're going to take the 30 GY, negative 30 GY, and it'll become a positive GY when you put it over to the other side. And you divide 120, which you get is the sum of the others, divided, divided by 30 equals 4 kips. And it's a positive 4 kips, so we know our assumption was correct. It goes up. Equals 4 kips. And then we want to do the sum of the forces in the y direction. That's a y. Equals 0. And... If you want to work this out, you can. We have 6 plus 6 plus 2 is 8. Minus 4 equals 4. It just equals 4. And we, we already know that because this is it's symmetrical. Therefore, we know since this was 4, this is 4. But let's go ahead and work it out. Let's, let's go through all the steps. I don't want to just skip over things. All right, we have what? Ay is a positive. Minus 3 kips. Minus 2 kips minus 3 kips, plus GY is 4 kips. So you have negative 8 right here. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. You bring the negative to the other side. You have to add 4 to get rid of it. AY also equals 4 kips. All right, and we, we have a structure you can now use to figure out your shear and moment to diagram. So that's what we're going to do. Going to clear some space here. With all of our, and remember, a x is zero. All right, let's do shear diagram first. Let's actually make it so it lines up. I haven't been the best at doing that in the past. Obviously, I'm not using graph paper. This is going to be completely positive moment, so I want to leave moment. Leave room here for X moment on the positive side. There we go. Now let's go ahead and just do the shear diagram. Let's change colors. Keep keep you guessing. Okay, so we go four up, and you treat this exactly like you would just a normal beam. It's not exactly the same, but it's it's pretty darn close. And I'll show you uh, point out the in intricacies later. Then we go over until we hit negative three. I want to go down three. We're at one kip down there. This is four kips still. 
Then we go over to negative 2, it goes down negative 2. This is 1 kip. This is negative 1 kip. And then we get this point, which is still negative 1 kip, and we go down 3 more kips to negative 4 kips. And as you would expect, it is. Then we go up 4 kips to 0, exactly where we want to be. And that should make sense. This, it should be, this is symmetrical, obviously. It's, this is all positive, this is all negative. And now we want to go ahead and do the moment diagram. And remember, this is 7.5 foot to this point. Another 7.5 foot, and 7.5 foot, and 7.5 foot to the end. All right, now we move in. Oh, we already know where the x it, it intercepts the vx axis. It's at um, 12.5. Wait, is that right? No, it's at 15. It intercepts right here at 15. So let's move on to our moment diagram. And I'm going to call this A1. Let's change colors. A2, change colors again, A3, I didn't really outline that, but hopefully you understand what it is. And then A4, we'll do in pink. Alright. And w I don't even need to go off this to the sides, since this is pretty darn simple. There aren't any halves or anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and put it down here. So we're going to increase the most at first. So we're going to have the higher, higher slope. So let's go ahead and say right there. And then we're going to increase less, so it's going to be a uh, less slope. So it's going to be about right there. And then it's going to go straight back down. And this is going to be the same. And then it's going to end at zero. And hopefully that makes sense to you, kind of what I just did right there. And it should go back down to zero after we add a negative A4. So let's go to green here and figure out what these numbers are. So once again we said 7.5 foot times 4 kips equals 30 foot kips. So at this point we're at 30 foot kips. Start at zero, go up to 30. Fair enough. And then we add, well let's just figure out what it is. 1 kip times 7.5 feet equals 7.5 foot kips, but we're adding that 30, so that's 37.5 foot kips. So we write that 37.5 foot kips. Oh, the phone's ringing in the background. One second, I'm going to get it. Never mind, my wife got it. Fantastic. And then we're going to head down, and let's figure out what that is. Well, we knew this area, A1, equaled 7.5. A3 is going to equal negative 7.5, which will give us 30 foot kips again. And as we know, we're going back to zero because A4 is a negative 30 foot kips. 30 foot kips minus a negative 30 foot kips is zero. We're back to zero. We're good. We're all whole. Every life is good when it comes back down to zero. When it doesn't, then you start to worry which you should. So what it's saying is, all right, if, if this were a straight beam, the max moment is 37.5 foot kips. Actually, you can say, hey, the, in this truss, the maximum load, the maximum this entire truss is going to take right down the center, it's 37.5 foot kips. Right here, it's 30 foot kips. That's what's what the, the truss is that's the load on the truss. But you say, well, it's not a beam. That's kind of confusing, and that's that's all right. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what you do to analyze this truss per the member. So you have to break this this truss up. This you don't even need to do, but I did it because I'm going to show you something in the next video that will blow your mind. Hopefully, we'll see. Maybe not. Okay, well, uh, please come back and see the next video, and we're going to do the method of joints. I'm going to 
to write it out. Method of joints. I'm like, so actually, I'll just go ahead and explain it real quick. Method of joints, what you do is you take the joint, let's say this is A, and you look at that joint only. And for instance, you kind of, what you do is you kind of cut it right there. You cut it right at the joint, and it will tell you, I always put that that these two are in tension. When they're going out, they're in tension. When they're coming in, they're in impression. I always assume they're in tension. And then you have four kips. And from this, you will take this joint and you will figure out what these forces are. And this is force AB. And this is force AC because it's going from joint A to C. Joint A to C force of a joint a from a to c and the force from a to b all right now i'm gonna go ahead and race this and then i'll meet you again for the next video on the method of joints